We're in good shape. All right, let's get started. Welcome, everyone, to uh, class two of week two. Um, Week one, yeah, yeah, whatever. <laughs> it seems like it's week two. Um, so uh, welcome to today. That's safe to say. Um, so today I want to do uh, finish 1.3. So inverses, which we've kind of done, are in 1.3. And then new functions from old is in 1.3. And then I'll we'll start 1.4. And I'll tell you what that is when we get to it. A uh, bunch of homework help coming up. Um, Mackenzie, Teresa, Corey, and me on today, today, tomorrow, and tomorrow. Homework's due at the end of today, I'm sorry, end of tomorrow, which um, basically means Saturday morning. So I come in Saturday morning and I gather my big pile and staple it if anybody hasn't stapled it, and uh, then start distributing it. The mail thing is in the Yeah, it's in, so the faculty mailboxes and staff mailboxes are in turrets. They are sort of at the bottom of the middle stairs, so not the like big grand stairs that like people would make grand entrances. Where, where the bathrooms are, yeah, near, yeah, near the bathrooms. <laughs> and um, visiting faculty have their own smaller set of mailboxes closer to the bathrooms, in what may or may not be a metaphor. <laughs> um, no, anyway, I mentioned that because sometimes it, you know, you're like convinced you know the alphabet and you're looking for a faculty member and he or she is not there. There's another set of mailboxes hiding off to the right that's easy to not notice sometimes. So, all right. Um, so that's the game plan basically for today. I want to again start with names. I'm feeling overwhelmed with names um, to, to learn. And then we'll um, pretty quickly jump into some exercises for you guys to do. So what did we do? We did math story. We did hometowns. What should we do today? We can just get more and more creative. <laughs> We've probably got a few more of these left. So we can just get weirder and weirder. <laughs> All right, we could do worst allergic reaction or kids are looking at worst job. Or worst job. Okay, that works. Amber, do you want to start? Um, All right, so what do I want to mention? There's, there's one thing I realized last night at the help session that um, I forgot to mention. And annoyingly, I realized that I also forgot to mention it like the last three times I taught the class. So I don't know what it is. But I always seem to forget to say a few words about proportionality. So let me say a few words about proportionality. And then there'll be um, a worksheet not about proportionality, but about funner things for you guys to do. So um, just a little bit about proportionality. Pro. Proportion AL. So um, this is just a technical math term for a pretty simple concept. Um, uh, it's a way of specifying a relationship between two things. So let's see. I might say the amount of grading I have to do is proportional to the number of students in this class. And that means they increase or decrease together. And in particular, if um, uh, sorry, I was going to say if I killed half of you, if I somehow <laughs> removed, removed half of you, you know, you got like a one-way ticket to the Common Ground Fair this weekend. My, my, um, my grading, yeah, there's no real need to kill you. You just need to not take, not, or if half of you decided to not hand in homework, then the amount of homework I have, then the time it takes me to grade homework goes down by a half. And if you all bring a friend, you know, annoyed that I attempted to kill you, you all bring a friend or you do the homework twice, so I have to grade it twice, then you, if the amount of homework is doubled, the amount of time it takes me to grade the homework also doubles. So um, that just says two things are in proportion to each other, so we might say, um, so this would be time, this would be n number of assignments. And then k, you would say, is a constant of proportionality. And in this case, it would be the time it takes me to grade each time, time per assignment or something. Um, and, but you might not always even know what this is. But if they're in proportion, it just says t equals k times n, or something equals k times the other thing. Um, suppose, um, suppose I wanted to uh, replace the carpet in a room, square room, and um, I want to know how much it's going to cost. So then I might have, well, how how would you how would you how would the cost depend on the size, like the length? 
Definitely. But in particular, more specifically, if this is S, if I doubled S, what would happen to cost? Yeah, it would end up being, end up being squared. So um, in this case, cost would be proportional to the square of the side of the room. Uh, and so the main thing is just how to, an equation like this, one would say aloud, cost is proportional to the square of the size of the room. That's, so this is just like a, a translation exercise, not, not meant to be deeper than that. And lastly, suppose you have some situation where um, the, something depends not, let me write it and then try to say it. So suppose you have, and we would say, So if the dependency is upside down, depends on 1 over the variable. So here we'll say x and y are inversely proportional. Um, the time it takes to do something is inversely proportional to the speed at which you do it. Bigger speed, smaller time. Longer time, slower speed. So um, this is just a, just a little bit of jargon. The book mentions it's pretty common math language sometimes, and you might encounter it elsewhere. So that's why I signed a couple problems on it. But then I forgot to mention it. But now I remembered, and now you know. Um, and, there, and this is covered in the book. There's a paragraph or two about this on the book. And if you're unclear on, the, um, on those questions or any others, you know where to find us. All right. So here it is. Returning to 1.3. Uh, this great chapter, New Functions from Old, where it's teaching you how to take the, your building block functions, which for now are just exponentials and uh, linear functions, um, but we'll have acquire more soon, and how to combine them and do things with them to make new functions. So um, what I want to do is a, a worksheet that will take a little while and is a tiny bit tedious, but I think it's actually worth sort of doing, doing a little bit of stuff by hand. It'll be some numbers, graphing. Um, shouldn't be anything stressful. So I'd say take a moment to do this, and then we'll talk about the conclusions. And the idea is hopefully that'll be better than just me saying what the conclusions are. And also, there's a little, um, another little practice problem on the other side that we'll also cover too. So let's, let's give these a whirl. So maybe we should take a moment and talk through these, it looks like um, at least many of you that I could glance at had your tables of numbers festooned with ones and twos. And I guess I should have said that implicit in this is that when in doubt, it's a one. So like if you're sort of compressing in, or if there's a number I didn't tell you what it is, it's it's a it's a one. So um, so here's the original function, and I sketch that over here. The original function, it's 1. And then at negative 2, it bounces up to 2. It's not to scale, but it's OK. It's a sketch. And then um, it jumps down to negative 2 over here, and then back up to 1. So it's a function with a couple little bumps in it. And what do we do? Um, what would the plot of this function look like? How does, that, how does this 2 alter the shape of this? You can just gesture if you want. Yeah, people stretches everything out. Yeah, and so you can see that because it, every number is twice as big as it was before. You do the function first. You do the function first, and then you multiply by two. So that just takes a number and doubles the positive numbers, doubles the negative ones. That way, it stretches it. So that goes to four. This goes to two. That flies down to negative 2, and then that negative 4, thank you. Yep. So um, I just did something that I do a lot. Um, I often say something wrong and draw it right. I mean, sometimes I do it wrong, like doubly wrong, but often I'll say one thing and draw the other. And it's good to correct me when I do that. Um, so when you put the 2 in front of it, it stretches, it just stretches everything, right? People 
we're kind of doing this. Um, just to anticipate what's going to come in chapters two and three, um, what happens to the steepness of the function when you do when you do this? It's steeper. steeper by how, by how much? Would you guess? Two. Yeah, I mean, there's only one number, I guess, around. What? Well, yeah. So yeah, so it actually makes this this now is twice as steep. This is twice as steep. Um, okay. So now let's look at these two, which I, I think are a little a little harder to think about, at least they are for me. So I'm going to again, let's see, attempt. I should have done this already. Minus two, plus two. So we're going to go. Mm, 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 mm. Okay. So let's think about what this does. Now we're adding two before we g the number. So how would you just describe in words or pictures what that does? Yep. So negative five. Yes, you. Um, so that it 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 sh it, sh it shifts it right. So that makes. Right, uh, so you have minus five. You add two to it, you get minus three, and then you say, "Gee, I wonder what g of minus three is." And you say, "Ah, it's one." That's that. So then here, um, for here, x is minus four. Minus four plus two is minus two, and then you'll say, "Gee, I wonder what g of minus two is." And it's 2. So that's why I wrote 2 there. So this um, has the effect. It's, it's doing some sort of shifting. I saw people gesturing horizontally. Yeah, and it's left, which is a little weird. Um, so let's see. So let me, let me draw that and then talk about that. So let's see if I can draw that. So this be minus 4. So this comes along. The bump happens earlier. This comes along, this bump happens earlier, and off it goes. Um, so the, the shift is to the left. Um, and so there are a couple ways. And at least to me, that's counterintuitive. You're like you're adding two, you think that should shift it to the right, because right is positive. Here are some ways to think about that. Um, so if we think of this as some sort of a story or life history, I don't know, um, this person ha is two days ahead, or two whatever, is two days ahead of this one. So whoever, whatever this one is, she's sort of got a two-day advantage. So she's going to hit the bump sooner than he does. So if that didn't help, don't worry about it. But if it did help, that's good. Um, did that did that make any sense at all to some people? Yeah. Okay, a few. Okay, all right. Um, and so then you can probably guess this is going to be the opposite story. This is this is this is somebody who's lagging behind. Yeah. You said that what, what did you don't know is the blunt. Yes. Even yeah. though, like, was it wrong to follow the pattern? Uh, no, it wasn't wrong because I didn't. It was wrong of me not to say. <laughs> so yeah, it would have been reasonable to follow the pattern. And if you did, in the same, in either, no matter how you interpreted it, adding to inside the function um, should shift it two to the left, whatever original function you had. And then this, you're lagging behind. So this one has to wait until zero before he experiences the bump that this one experiences at minus two. And you can also see that from, you know, from the table of numbers. You can just sort of look. There's a 2 here. It gets shifted up, more negative, this one, and down for that one. So at the risk of totally making a jumble of this graph, oh, I might as well label this. What was this? This is g of x plus 2. And all right, here we go. Chugging along. Mm -mm. Wait till minus 4. Mm -mm -mm. So this is g of x minus 2. Um, so another thing, just to drive this home, notice you're, 
you're messing around with the inside of the function, not the outside. So the function ranges from, well, 1, 1, 2, 1, 1, minus 2. And so that overall shape doesn't change because you're doing stuff before you g the number that's going to shift it left and right. Uh, OK. Uh, ready for one more? OK. I'll assume that's yes. Nobody's protesting loudly. All right, so I've kind of boxed myself in here, but we'll see what I can do. So. And I don't know why I make sounds when I draw, but it helps me. OK, so now, um, well, what's happening to this, this 2x? How would you describe that geometrically? You can wave your hands if you want. Yeah, it's doing, doing this, shrink, shrinking in. So the, the twos that were here right, are now in there. So let's see. Let's try this vibrant green. Um, so the way, the way I think about this is by putting this 2 here, it's like you're living your life twice as fast. Or you're watching a movie on, on double playback time, which actually, those of you in Denmark, you might want to watch this on twice playback time. It goes by, goes by a little faster. Um, in fact, the speed that you speed it up by is inversely proportional to the amount of time it takes you to watch the video. Anyway, um, so you're, you're living your life twice as fast, so everything, everything is closer together. Um, this one, you're living your life twice as slow. You can you can do this on YouTube. It's not set up by default, if, but if you go to I think if you go to um, YouTube.com/html5, that activates you into HTML5 instead of Flash or whatever or JavaScript, whatever they use. And in that, you can then change the playback speed. But it, it doesn't, to a pretty good approximation, change the pitch. So it's not like you're listening like like the Chipmunks version of calculus. Anyway, it's really useful. When I watch lectures online, and particularly classes where the instructor sometimes talks slow and didactically, um, it's nice to be able to speed it up. Anyway, um, so this is you're slowing the video down, and so things happen farther apart. All right, there it is. And, 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 and this is going to look something like this. Let's see, I should label these. This is g of x over 2. This is g of 2x. Are, are there questions on this? How did you get the numbers in the last column? The last column. Uh, I, again, I sort of ass was assuming one. So like I took, OK, so let's do this one. So minus 4, minus 4 to, so I take minus 4 in, I divide it by 2. Mm -hmm. That gives me minus 2. Say so what's g of minus 2? It's 2. OK, and you assume the one you did the lower one. Yeah, all the half ones I made to, okay. into b1, yeah. And if you did something else, that's totally fine, because the question was, it was ambiguous. Um, so let's see. This may seem sort of simple, but this is actually but sort of being able to think of functions in this way. When you see a complicated function, being able to break it down into saying, oh, well, that's just a blah function that's been shifted this way and stretched that way gives you a greater fluency to think in terms of those functions. And when we start evaluating derivatives, which I mean, you don't know what they are, but you'll know soon what they are, being able, you'll also sort of being able to decompose complicated functions into shifts and stretch and folds of functions is really, really valuable. And I think actually doing, like filling out this table of numbers helps to drive that home as opposed to just me saying it. OK, you may or may not be convinced, but soon you'll be convinced how wonderful this is. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's a great, that's a great point. Yes. So if you wanted to shift every, I should, I should write this in addition to saying this.
So this is what Grace just said. If you, if you add a number after you do the function, you just, you just make everything too bigger. So that's just a shift up. So, um, so, so adding or subtracting is just a shift up or shift down, adding or subtracting after the function. Multiplying after the function is, either, is a stretch this way or a compress that way. Adding or subtracting before the function is either a shift this way or that way. Multiplying before the function inside the parentheses is either a compression this way or a stretch that way. And one way to remember things is that when you're doing, when the shift or the stretch happens inside the function, it's kind of the opposite of what you might expect. Maybe it's, or at least it's the opposite of what I would expect. You would think, oh, you're doubling something. Everything should be bigger. But if you're doubling it before you do the function, it actually compresses things in. Think about playing a videotape twice as fast. All right. This happens every year. I love chapter 1, 3. And people are like, yeah, that's all right. I mean, it's OK. It's your, it's your prerogative. Um, I, can't, I can't tell you what to like. But it really is handy. And, and, and this will totally pay off in the next couple chapters. Any other questions or comments on this? OK. So now let's shift to 1, 4. And I'll do some erasing. And you all should take a deep breath. Okay. Uh, uh, uh. OK. So 1, 4. I didn't want to use the word earlier, but I have to use it now. So 1, 4 is on logarithms. We're going to continue our journey through building block functions. 1, 4 is about logarithms. 1, 5 is about uh, trig functions. So let me mention just a little bit about where, where we're headed. And then we'll just kind of dive in. I'll say some stuff. You'll do some stuff, the usual thing. Um, so remember, there are four epochs to the course. The first one, that's the one we're in right now, is reviewing functions and building up a library of functions. And I, I said before, and I'm saying again right now, that that's probably the most difficult part of the course. And we're now right in the midst of that. And this upcoming week is likely, if not the most difficult, going to be the bumpiest part of the course. So, um, so the next problem set is almost twice as long as this one. And it includes logarithms and trig functions, and then some of this weird stretching and folding stuff that you'll come to like, particularly compared to logs and trig functions. Um, so I mentioned that as a warning, but also as, uh, what's the opposite of a warning? I can't, I can't think of the word. Encouragement, yes, thank you, yes. So that's supposed to be, it's supposed to be a, a bit of encouraging news as well. So uh, yes, it's going to be bumpy. I expect it to be bumpy. Um, you'll all get through it, but it just, you know, brew an extra cup of coffee, give yourself some extra time, start earlier. Um, but also know, in, but don't be thinking, oh my god, it's only week two, I'm doomed, because it's going to get, it, it's just going to get better from, from there. Again, it's still, there'll be challenging moments, but the next one is just sort of the bumpiest. And the reason is, it's not anything terribly hard or devious, but you're going to be reviewing logarithms and trig functions and a bunch of algebra stuff, and they're all kind of unrelated, and it's a bunch of stuff you're going to have to review um, and think about functions in different ways. Um, so, but that's okay. There's a lot of us here to help. We'll have fun together, and then we'll get to week th week three, and things will start then kind of coming together, and it'll seem more like just stuff happening. All right, was that encouraging or or frightening? I, I didn't mean it to be frightening, but it's just honest. Okay, so the next next week's gonna be a little bumpy, but fasten your seatbelts. It's gonna be fine. Well within sort of safe flight parameters. Don't worry. All right, so. Um, Let's talk a little bit about logarithms, which get a really bad rap. So hopefully you'll leave class today or next time feeling a little better about logarithms if you are among those that don't seem to like them. All right. So um, we've learned about exponentiating. Um, so 10 squared, that's, that's doing an exponent. What would that equal? 100. Yep, awesome. OK. So then you might also someday sort of have this. Gee, 10 to, the, 10 to the what is 100? It's not a trick question. It's, it's 
two. Two, yep, so uh, <laughs> equals two. Um, so, um, OK, so you just took a logarithm. That's all logarithms are. It's just solving for things up in the exponent. And it happened so much that it, rather than just say solving for things up in the exponent, it was given a name logarithm, which must be some, it's some weird Greek amalgam something. It's got a th. I always forget the origin since it's got a th in it. Um, all right, so, um, so this question mark, we would say that log of 100 equals 2. Say, so, well, why would we say that? Why? Uh, because 10 squared equals 100. So we have exponentiating, and then we have logarithming. And they undo each other. So a way to think about this is you have the number 10, and you square it, and you get 100. And you say, you know, oh, no, I didn't mean to do that. And you want to go backwards. And like, what, what did I have up here to make this 100? Oh, yeah, it was 2. So that's all log is. It's just doing exponentials backwards. So the log function is the inverse of an exponential. Um, all right. So let me, let me write what I just said in um, a slightly more general equation. So log x equals c means that 10 to the c equals x. So that's how the book, the book writes it. Um, if you want a, a little bit more compact form, you can do it this way. So I sort of think of this as being the defining equation for a log. I mean, these, these contain the same information. I often think of it this way. The book thinks of it that way. Whatever you like is, is better. Um, so this says if you start with x and you log it and you get some number, but then you stick that number back up in the exponent, you're back to where you started from. So it's an inverse. It's like taking your socks on. Like, I didn't want to do that. You take your socks off back to your feet. Again, no, no big deal. All logarithms are is like taking socks off. Um, OK. Let's see. So let me, let me say, not quite sure how to end on a stirring note. You all look a little bit nonplussed. Um, so log is inverse of Exponential. So we've got we've got words. This is a, a word version, maybe not the friendliest word version, but that's a way to think about what log is in words. This is the same thing in symbols. Um, let's do something in pictures. So suppose we had the function ten to the x. What does ten to the x look like? You can just gesture. Yep. Yeah, it's a, it's 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 a it's a growing it's a growing exponential exponential growth. We know things that grow exponential, right? We're doomed. Well, unless it's a chocolate, then we're like really happy. But if it's like bad things, then we're doomed. Anyway, so here's this is, sorry, this is a bit of a mess. Here's an ex, there's exponential growth. So, um, last time we talked about the geometric relationship between a function and its inverse. So, and I remember I did it over here, and I drew two lines. One of them was white, one of them was pink. And, in, and when we do an inverse, we're just swapping input and output. And so that has the effect of reflecting this line over the y equals x line. Um, so there's 10 to the x. Bless you. There would be log x. So exponential functions, super, super fast growing things. Log functions, super, super slow growing things. As fast as the exponential grows, that's how slow the log grows. It's really slow. Um, all right. Um, 
what do I have here? All right, so let me mention one more thing. Um, so of course, you can always look these up, because you don't have to memorize anything in this class. But you may be um, amused, alarmed to know that you actually have these graphs on your body. So if you look at your right hand, I don't know why I'm turning my back to you, but anyway, right hand, anyway, there it is. Um, you've got an exponential function and a log function. So there it is. On your left hand, it doesn't really work. But on your right hand, all right. So um, there are lots of disadvantages to being left-handed in the world. They make you sit over on that side. But you can, you can do the right-hand rule in physics, and you can do this dumb little log thing, and you don't even have to pick up your pencil. You can just, you can just, just keep going. Anyway, so um, let's, all right, that's a good note to end, to end this little vignette on. So try, try problems one and two, um, and, but don't do the ones that talk about natural log. All right, let's, um, let's talk through these and um, see what people have to think. So I did, so here are the first couple. And I know this is a little bit pedantic. And you may or may not want to write this out in your notes. But um, when you're in doubt about logs, talking to yourself this way um, maybe can help you clear things up. It reminds you what a log is. And some of it is, is that it's hard to say what a log does. It's, it's easier to say what a log undoes, which is exponentiation. Anyway, so I would, I would claim that log of 1,000 is 3. Why do I claim that? Well, because 10 to the 3 gets me back to 1,000. So that 3 is that 3. Put your socks on. You take your socks off. All right. Um, this one's even sillier. 10 to the 4 is 4. Why? Because I need to raise 10 to the 4 in order to get 10 to the 4. Um, I guess another way of saying log, which is very hard to do it grammatically, um, log x is the thing you need to raise 10 to to get x back. I mean, that's just what that's that's turning this equation into a sentence. Log x is the thing you need is the thing you need to raise 10 to in order to get x back. Uh, okay. So now let's do some of these more interesting ones. Um, what do you? What would log one be? Zero. Zero. Um, why? Zero is one. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay, I know it's a, it's a little bit pedantic, but just roll with it. Um, and in fact, anything, any number to the zero, is one. Um, all right. What about what about negative ten? What's log of negative ten? Not, it is, <laughs> yeah, stupid, not real, undefined, doesn't, ex doesn't exist. Um, why? Be because there's nothing, yeah, so there's no number that you could put up here that would make this equation true. There's no way to take a positive number 10, raise it to any power, positive or negative, and get a negative number out. Um, is, uh, I didn't leave myself enough room, Unde undefined because, because, yeah, um, there is no, that makes this true. I guess you could put x here, but I like putting question mark just because it like, to fill in the blank. Um, all right, um, what do you, what would you say log zero is? Same thing. Yeah. So it wouldn't. Yeah. There's a temptation to have it be zero, but then you could check log zero is zero. Why? Because ten to the zero equals zero. Oh no, ten to the zero equals one. So this one also is undefined. Um, for the for the same reason. So is log point one plus one times. Ah, oh, did I did I skip that one? Yeah. Oh, that's that was like that was the whole punchline of all these. Uh, okay. Log 
0 0.1 equals hmm. Why? Because 10 to the hmm equals 0 0.1. Um, any idea what might we have to raise? Is there anything we can raise 10 to to get a tenth out? Minus 1. Yeah, and so this would be minus 1. Um, and 10 to the minus 1 negative exponents mean this. And a tenth is 0 0.1. Um, so, so this is this is one. The log of one is zero. It, you just told me why? Because um, ten to the zero is one. And numbers in here between zero and one are going to have negative logs. Zero or anything to the left of here won't have any logs at all, unless we deal with complex numbers. But we won't. Um, OK. Um, log, are we good so far? All right. So what about log of 5,000? What, what is that between? How would you think? Three and four. Um, um, since, let's see. So right, because log 1,000 equals 3, log 10,000 equals 4. Apologies to Europeans who don't like that. Um, so 5,000 5, is between 1,000 and 10,000. And the log of 1,000. Do I need to say that? It might be easier if I don't try to say this. Should I say this? <laughs> I'm, happy to, I'm happy to try that sentence again, but I also don't know if Um, it might be useful. You could also, if you wanted, two, three, two, three, four. No, that's not, I'll do it this way. Um, the main thing to note it, the log function is always increasing. So if you know that the log of 1,000 is 3 and the log of 10,000 is 4, the log of 5,000 has to be between 3 and 4. That's what I was trying to say earlier. I don't know why I couldn't. And I don't know why I'm still talking about this, because this is not a deep point. Are we, are, are, are we OK with okay this, or should I? OK, I'm going to move on. All right. Um, OK, so a lot of the times you'll be using your calculator for logarithms. But it's good to know, and it's a real art to like not become a total slave to your um, calculator. It's a great tool, but you should also be able to think, you know, think with it, not let it think for you. Like same thing with like GPS. Um, you, you, like you shouldn't like totally let your sense of direction atrophy and like just because you have a GPS that tells you where to drive. Anyway. Um, so if you're if you're just start plugging something in and, and your calculator gags and refuses to give you something, you should step back and say, "Gee, why did it did that? Did I screw up? Did I?" You know, and maybe you're asking it to do something impossible. Anyway, um, all right. Let me say. Let me say two more things about logarithms. One of which um, I suspect will be more popular than the other. So I'll do the unpopular one first. How about that? Um, So what we've been working with so far are base 10 logarithms, which are a really nice thing to do because it's easy to, well, because you can just answer questions like this. What's log of 1,000? It's 3, because 10 times 10 times 10 is 3. But um, in some circles, and very soon you will be among those circles, um, it will be convenient, some would even say natural, to use um, a different base, base e where e is roughly, what, 2.7818. Um, so again, um, logs using this base would be called natural logarithms. 
but to you they should seem like hideously unnatural logarithms for another two or three weeks. The point being, this shouldn't seem at all in intuitive. It's like, oh, that's weird. But at least uh, the best I can do is convince you now, like, well, there's no reason why you couldn't do this. Right? I mean, it's a free country. I could use any base I wanted. I, I, a lot of people want to do base E. Well, maybe they have a reason. Um, so what that means is that the, um, base E logarithms are often abbreviated LN. So LN x equals C means that e to the c equals x, or e to the log x equals x. So, um, so you natural log something, and you're like, oops, I didn't mean to do that. Well, if you exponentiate it with an e, you get back to where you came from. So it's like a very unnatural pair of socks you're taking off. That's what natural logs do. Really weird socks. But you can, you know, whatever, you put them on, you just take them off with that natural log. Um, I think that's all I want to say about natural logs for now. I mean, we'll come back to them. Here's another way to think about logs. Uh, where will I do this? Maybe I'll do this over here. So there's a quantity. Always happens. As soon as I start erasing something, I have second thoughts. Maybe I want to, but all right. I've already started. All right. So there's something that Jordan Ellenberg, who's a math prof at uh, Madison, University of Wisconsin-Madison, plus he wrote a book called How Not to Be Wrong. That's pretty fun. Um, and he calls some, something a fake logarithm. So there's this thing called a fake logarithm. I mean, there's not really, but fake logarithm. which is just the um, number of digits in a number. And a fake logarithm is a very good approximation to a real logarithm. So um, this is the part I maybe regret now having erased. Um, so like if you're at 1,000 and you want to get another digit in your number, you need to multiply by 10. So like every time you multiply by 10, the log goes up by 1. Um, maybe another way to think about this, I said before that logs grow really, really slowly. And I think it's hard to comprehend how slow logs grow. Maybe you've been in classes where people try to scare you with exponential functions. Somebody? Like exponential pop, I mean, not, not just like brandishing this, but like, <laughs> but what I mean, like, ex like exponential growth, population growth, out of control, or like the salamanders in the pond are growing exponentially. We're going to be nothing but salamanders and no room, no room to move. The, right? Exponential functions, they grow really, really fast. Yikes. OK. And it's sort of hard to conceive of just how fast exponential functions grow. Um, it's, I think, similarly hard to conceive how slow log functions grow. So as scary fast as these are, that's how scary slow or or just how super slow these are. And this maybe gives a way to think about how slow it is. So if you're at, if you're at a million and you go to a billion, that's a huge increase, like a million to a billion. But the log would only go up by three, tiny, tiny little one, two, three, because you just added three digits. Anyway, so if you want sort of another way to think about what, what a logarithm is, instead of th saying what it undoes, which is taking off it's like taking off socks or unexponentiating. You could also think of it as giving the number of digits in a number. But that's ac it's not exactly right, but it, it's close enough to right. That's why it's called the fake logarithm. And if you don't like that, that's OK. It's Jordan Ellenberg's idea, not mine. Um, all right, let's see. Is that, I don't have any accurate watch. Is that 217? All right. Um, Let me do let me do let me let me do an example and um, 
actually So, at, or well, let me see if, there, if there's a preference. What I think I want to do is there's a little bit of sort of like algebraic mechanics with logs, properties of logs, how to use logs to solve for variables. My thought is just to do that in a video. Like ten, it might be 10 minutes instead of five. Um, and then you can like watch it slow or fast. You now know how to think about that in terms of functions. Um, so I kind of feel like maybe we should end class here. Rather, otherwise, I'm going to have to rush through an example. And I'm just guessing that rushing through an example at the end of class is not not a good thing. No. So why don't we just, why don't we, um, so there'll be, I'll post it in a day or two, probably like a 10 minute video, a little longer than usual. I'll do a couple log problems. And um, we'll, then we'll start next class with a couple log practice problems. Then you don't have to listen to me so much. <laughs>